Even though the puffin was a common bird, I thought the time to do something for it was now. I was young and impatient and eager to move this, this process forward. I wasn't going to just hope that they would show up on their own after they'd been gone for over 100 years. It was 40 years ago that I met Steve Crest for the first time. I happened to stop in at Ithaca, New York when this, this student was giving the Monday night seminar about his brand new project to try to reintroduce puffins to Eastern Egg Rock. And I was this, you know, idealistic teenager and uh, Steve wasn't that much older, you know. And in the front you had all the, the younger kids, the students and, you know, like, uh, hitchhikers like me just up there just eating up every word and toward the back there like the older professors who were you know saying well you know this this sort of thing has never been tried it's not that likely to work and we shouldn't be all that enthused about it I was surprised by the number of people that I met that said why why do this why mess with the balance of nature why try to play God the prevailing view was to let nature take its course 51 years ago, we didn't see any puffins because there was no Steve Kress to bring them back. I, I went up and shook hands with Steve Kress after it was like, you know, this, this guy is a visionary. So when I started off to move the first puffin chicks, I thought it would be just a few summers and then I would be on to something else and the puffins would come back and that would be the end of it. And I could visit Egg Rock and, and see puffins again. It was a very naive, very simplistic view of nature. It took eight years, really, to get the first nesting. And it took the first 25 years to get up to 100 uh, puffin chicks on, on the island. So I think that these kinds of projects require not just vision, but they require dogged persistence to stick with something until you see the end that you hope you will see. The challenge is uh, it's all trial and error. Those early interns, they didn't really know how this project was going to turn out, but somehow they had confidence that I knew what I was doing. Actually, I was inventing things as I went. To me, it's, it's really a special thing to uh, look at this 40th anniversary of the project and see just how incredibly well it has done and how the techniques developed there have been used to help seabirds all over the world. Project Puffin was the first program to translocate uh, seabird chicks to new habitat. Translocation of chicks is now widely used for restoring petrels and shearwaters, especially in the southern hemisphere. The method that is used most often is what we call social attraction. This also was developed at Eastern Egg Rock. Uh, we put out decoys first for puffins, but the combination of decoys and audio recordings like we use for turns has become a mainstay of seabird restoration. One of the truly rewarding things about this project is that I've seen the methods that we've developed here spread to over 100 projects in 14 countries, benefiting 47 different seabird species, and many of those I have never even seen yet. We were trying to bring birds back, populations that were damaged by plume hunting here on the main coast long ago. Now the methods are helping resolve fisheries conflicts, uh, recoveries from oil spills, moving birds to higher ground from climate change, getting birds off of active volcanoes that could erupt and destroy the last relics of a population. Those are applications I had no vision of initially, but creative people are using the methods, adapting them to help seabirds worldwide. Now every species of seabirds that is historically known to breed on eastern egg rock is back, and that's very satisfying. That idea of restoring seabird communities, not just single species, was also new to this program. This has led to developing 13 islands along this coast, seven managed by Project Puffin, the others managed by the Maine Coastal Islands National Wildlife Refuge, and our other partners, And while I have had the pleasure of being with this project for 40 years, uh, 
it's really not my project alone. It's all the hundreds of interns that have helped me every step of the way. A big part of this work is to teach the students that are going to be, you know, doing this, that are going to graduate with bio biology degrees and continue field work and continue research and continue conservation. To be able to uh, give, you know, undergraduate students the, the experience of working out in the field, working with seabirds, uh, working, you know, on a project that is as long standing as Project Puffin is just such a great opportunity for a lot of people. At the same time, we're also, you know, conserving all the, all the great species of birds. So it's really a win-win in my book. I hope the interns in Project Puffin realize they too can get an idea, save a species, work toward a conservation goal, but it takes time and persistence. And that is really amazing to see so many people all working for the same goal. And if you think about the state of puffins 30 years ago or so, and there weren't any really, and then this project brought them back, you know, and that's really, really cool. And then to keep at it all these years and keep reciting birds and keep studying them and putting geolocators on them to see what they're doing when they're out to sea, this is just amazing how much dedication everyone has here. I think of myself as part of the future of conservation, and I think a lot of the other people working on this project do as well. It's pretty rare to just jump into a job and say, here's a bird, band it. Or like, here's a really expensive scope use this nice equipment like you're really being trained in so many different aspects to be like a, you know a good researcher and kind of a good person. It's a battle you can never win but you can't afford to lose. The work is not done. Now there is recognition that people need to be the stewards of life on earth and if we do nothing we can be certain that the lack of action will in fact result in extinctions. There's never been a time more urgent than today. 28% of all the seabird species in the world are now threatened and endangered. An individual person can make a huge difference. And I think when you look around at all the conservation successes that have happened, and you dig into them, you generally find one passionate person that stuck with it long enough to see the outcomes, and that's where the real differences are made.